Hey, everybody. Sorry for the technical delays here. Bronson, good to see you, buddy. Anton, Ronnie, John. Uh, we're going to give everybody about one more minute here just to hop on. Um, you know, so just bear with us here. All right. Can everybody hear me? Ronnie, can you give me a thumbs up, buddy? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. All right. All right. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Buddy, for joining in here again. Sorry for the couple minute delay. I was fumbling around with technology here, and as somebody, as some of you guys know, I'm, I'm I was the sales guy in my former life uh, on the IT side, and Ferris was the one that was actually building technology. So um, not as good on it as uh, as I'd like, but uh, I do appreciate everybody hanging tight while we let everybody in. Uh, Want to be respectful of everybody's time here, so we can go ahead and get kicked off. Um, you know, this is our you know, we do multifamily masters along with our DFW partners every month. Uh, we typically have, you know, a good speaker, a good panelist, great topics that we kind of discuss. And tonight we're going to have Mr. Bronson Hill, and I'll, I'll let him uh, introduce himself here in a minute. But um, let me go ahead and kick off here. I've got my headphones on just to make sure everybody can kind of kind of hear me a little bit better. But uh, Ben Suttles, uh, I am with Disrupt Equity. Uh, we host events, you know, from webinars to in-person events to conferences. Uh, but uh, we're deal guys. We love buying multifamily. Uh, we typically, um, you know, buy, you know, 200 to 300 unit properties, currently have about 3,000 units, um, you know, going to have probably close to, you know, 3,500 in here in the next 60 days. So uh, excited to have everybody on. Uh, let Ferris, my, uh, my partner in crime here, introduce himself. And then uh, we'll, let, right. uh, we'll let the rest of the hosts uh, kind of do their thing as well. Thank you, Ben. All right. Like Ben said, this is Multifamily Masters. We do this every month. So same time, same day of the week. So look forward to seeing more of y'all there. But that said, I'm the, the more charming half of Disrupt Equity, as I like to say. Uh, you know, for those that don't know me, my background is software. Um, would love to get to know more of you. I formerly worked at Microsoft and ended up kind of getting into real estate and loved it, realized it's the things that we love, you know, people's numbers and systems. And so, as Ben said, we're vertically integrated, based in Houston, Texas, and continuing to grow. So it's been a busy year and continuing to push that forward. All right. All right. Good deal. Let's go with uh, Mr. Anton. You want to introduce yourself? Yes, sure. Thanks, uh, Ben and Ferris, and to Madly with Peak Financing. Uh, we help uh, syndicators and other commercial real estate investors with the financing uh, for commercial real estate. And particularly on the multifamily side, we are very active in helping syndicators getting their deals done. Uh, particularly over the last couple of months, it has been, as some of you probably have experienced, has been particularly challenging. And now it's more important than ever to, to pick the right partners. I personally have been involved in commercial real estate and multifamily on the financing as, in, as well as investment side for now almost 30 years. So I have seen all the ups and downs. So uh, these are crazy times, but also interesting times. And uh, it's only times that create a lot of opportunities. And uh, so I certainly look forward to, to hear what uh, Bronson uh, is uh, uh, telling us tonight. All right, all right. Thank you, Mr. Anton. Let's go with Mr. Ronnie. How's it going, everyone? I'm Ronnie Phillip with the Kingley Group Real Estate Private Equity Firm based in Dallas, Texas. We focus on Class A and Class B multifamily across the Sunbelt region. We've bought and sold 572 units, um, and we're growing. And i um, really excited to have uh, Bronson on and talk about raising equity. I think this is a very appropriate time to talk about it because I feel like everyone's having different types of challenges when it comes to raising equity. I know Bronson has talked to over 1,200 investors one-on-one, -on -one, so a lot of reps in. So be sure, it's a very interactive event, so be sure if you have questions or comments on raising equity, be sure to put in the in the chat below, and I'll drop in my info so y'all can uh, reach out to me as well. So I'll pass it over to John. Thank you. Thanks, Ronnie. Uh, good evening, everybody. John Montero. I'm based in Frisco, Texas, in the DFW Metroplex. Uh, moved here in 2009 and have been doing full-time commercial real estate since. Uh, focused on Texas multifamily, both on the uh, acquisition as well as development side. 
Uh, we have uh, just under 11,000 doors under management. The majority of those are in Texas. Uh, and then we also have uh, six multifamily ground up, to pro uh, ground up projects that we're working on inside the state totaling uh, over 4,000 units. So um, I've never uh, never met Bronson, so I'm excited to, to, to listen to what he has to say. I've listened in on a bunch of his uh, different panels and very impressed with the content that he puts out. So uh, looking forward to tonight. Well, without further ado, everybody, I'm going to let Bronson do his introduction. But as as Ronnie had mentioned, this is an interactive webinar, right? We want to do a lot of Q and A. So, you know, hopefully Bronson can stay around and answer some of our questions. But uh, you know, I think the other thing to kind of to take into consideration is it is challenging times right now as far as equity raising, as far as getting deals done, and so learning from people that have done it right, that have best practices, that have some tips as to how to go about and approach these is important. So get those questions ready. And uh, without further ado, I'll go ahead and pass it over to, to Bronson. Awesome, guys. Thanks for well, hopping so, on, Bronson. Hey, I'm really uh, excited to be here. And what, a, what an all-star crew here, both from the leaders that are running this, Ben and Ferris, John, Anton, and, and Ronnie. I mean, just some amazing people and even looking through the crowd here, I, I recognize a lot of names, people that I, I know, they're friends. So great to see all of you here. And it feels really humbling to be sharing with you. Obviously it's, uh, you know, we're all where we're at and there's things we can learn. So I hope that for each of you, wherever you're at, whether you're new to capital raising or you've been doing it for years, I hope that you get something out of this. So uh, if you're not into capital raising, uh, that's totally okay. And you want to kind of see behind the curtain, that's totally fine too. So I'd love to welcome you. We do deals and I'm sure all the leaders here do deals. So make sure you connect with other folks while you're here as well. So kind of how this is going to work, I'm going to go through a screen share and share some stuff about uh, just kind of get into the topic Then I'm going to introduce myself. It looks like I'm the host now. So I'm letting people in here. Um, so I will, uh, we'll get that going and then we're going to have some Q&A at the end. So if you have questions, you can put them in the chat now. Um, I probably won't get to them until later. Um, if you have something urgent, you can maybe come off me and say, hey, you know, talk about this or whatever. So feel free if there's something that you feel would be good to address. So I'm going to do a screen share. We're going to get started here and really looking forward to jump in. Really, really excited about this. So, um, okay. So I'm going to try to go full screen here. All right. Is that coming through good? Give me a thumbs up. Looks good. Looks okay, good, great. Awesome. Okay. So this is uh, how to raise $12 million for real estate in the next 12 months. This is something we actually did. Um, and I'll get into my bio here in a minute, but raised uh, $12 million over a 12 month period. And I'm um, about four years into to multifamily real estate, done a lot of different things. I'm going to get into that here in a second, but I want to talk about you for a minute about your life. Like, what is it that brings you here tonight? Like what would raising more money for you do? What would it allow you to do? And so I thought about this. I thought about, you know, just kind of making a specific number for it, right? $12 million in 12 months. What would that mean? Well, in general, I kind of broke that down. Again, these are just ballparks. Some of you might say, well, that's not exactly right, whatever. This is a ballpark, okay? So just, you know, I'm, I'm a big picture guy. I'm not a, a super, you know, somebody's going to write, uh, you know, knock me in this different ways. But I figured if I could raise $12 million, what would that mean? That mean over a 12-month period, I could get about $240,000 in acquisition fees, and I'd have about another $1 million in cash flow and appreciation, uh, you know, throughout the life of the deals that I would do, which is huge, right? And this is, this is money that could potentially change your life, right? I had a great job and I'll get into it. I had a job I was making 200 to 250,000 a year. And I was just able to leave about a year ago because I saw the upside of what I was doing in raising capital and being a part of deals and being a general partner. I think the term capital raiser is kind of an overused term and we should be compliant where we are involved in deals. We're looking at properties, we're doing diligence, we're doing our own underwriting and we're actually a part as a general partner, contributing partner. But a part of every deal, you have the deal and you have the money. And if you don't have the, the money, you can't do the deal. So that's really what I've kind of focused on. So uh, what would it allow you to do? For you, maybe it would allow you to leave your job. It would allow you to travel more, spend more time with family. It would allow you to be able to pursue your passions, which is something that's important to me. I have lots of different interests and passions and things that I enjoy. But uh, I think it's important to really think about the why uh, of what you're doing and, and what it is. So what are the challenges to raising big money? You know, maybe you, you've never raised money before. A lot of people think, well, you know, I've never done it. I don't know how to do it. Um, you know, I, I really don't know the process. I, I don't have a plan for it. You know, maybe I've raised some money, but I, I want to scale. And how do I scale? And I think that's something that I've learned just through my experience and working with partnerships I've been in and also just uh, by trial and error. Uh, there's a lot of trial and error. Um, there's, there's a saying that when you're an entrepreneur, uh, it's very different than being an employee. As an employee, you can't make mistakes because if you make too many mistakes, you'll get fired. As an entrepreneur, which if you are a real estate investor and you're looking to operate, you're an entrepreneur. 
And what happens is you are having to make lots of mistakes and being comfortable with that and learning very quickly what works and what doesn't work. And if you're able to do that well, you're able to continue to learn, then you'll be, you may be successful as an entrepreneur. So it's, it's a very different uh, way of, of looking at things. Um, so how tough is this to do? I would say in general, uh, you don't really need prior experience. You know, little or no money is needed. Oh, something just happened there. Did I skip? Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, you can start part-time. You can keep working your regular job, which I was able to do. I worked my regular job for a few years. I got to about 25 million raise before I actually quit my job because I had a great job. I wasn't just eager. I was ready to leave my job, but I wanted to kind of work with the process to be able to do that. Um, so I'm going to get in just a little bit of my bio here. So I've raised 27 million for uh, multifamily real estate. There's people in this room that have raised substantially more than that, but um, it's been you know a great run the last four years. Uh, general partner in over 200 million in multifamily, over 2,000 units. I'm the author of How to Use Inflation to Your Advantage, a new ebook I just put out on my website. And then I have this other ebook called The Single Best Investing Strategy During and After a Pandemic. I also lead an in-person meetup in Pasadena, California called Phoebe Pasadena Multifamily. If you're ever in California, the first Wednesday of the month in Southern California, please come by and visit us. Um, okay, so this was my a little bit of my story. So I started out, I was working for 10 years, I worked in medical device sales. And what that means is I would look like this, I would wear scrubs, I'd wear a lead apron to cover my vital organs, and I would go into surgery, into the OR, and I would work with cardiologists and other physicians to help them uh, treat their patients. So it, it was a great job. I was making good money. I was making 200, 250,000 a year. I won trips. I'd go, you know, I, I did very well at it. And a lot of people would say, why would you ever want to leave, right? Why would you ever want to leave that? Well, I wanted to have more freedom. And to me, freedom meant freedom over my time. And even this year, I look back, I haven't had no regrets about leaving my job. I literally haven't had one. And I've traveled five times internationally this year, a couple, a couple for work, a uh, few for fun. I've got one more. I'm going to Patagonia later this year. So it really, you know, it, it allows me to have more freedom over my time. And I can basically be able, I'm working very, very hard. I'm working harder probably than I was. People say, oh, you retired, right? And I'm like, yeah, I retired so I could work, you know, more for myself. So I think a lot of you can probably relate to that as well, that, um, you know, once you retire, you actually can work more or you quit working for someone else. So you can work more for yourself. So this was a little bit of my strategy initially, like a lot of people, I thought, hey, I'm going to buy uh, single family houses. And I had a small single family portfolio. I had four or five houses. My goal was to get to 30 houses. And then I realized it was a lot of work and I was going to have this, you know, quote unquote, passive income. And I was going to, you know, retire from my job and just do that. And then I, I found a mentor who was a cousin of mine, more of a distant cousin. And he, uh, you know, there's a saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And that's really exactly how it works in my life is that this, um, you know, this, this cousin showed up and he said, why don't you, why don't you do multifamily? And I said, well, I'd love to, but I don't have the money. And um, he said, you can raise the money. So that took me on a process of learning about syndication, learning how it worked, learning the process. And again, that was uh, just over four years ago. So uh, there's three tickets I'm going to share with you um, about, you know, what this actually looks like for you to grow your syndication business, or if you haven't raised any money, how you can start raising money and how you can potentially have, you know, even much better than maybe you'll raise a hundred million in 12 months, but how the principles really are the same. And I think, especially in this time where, uh, as, uh, you know, Ben was saying, it, it is getting or Ferris was saying, it's getting harder to raise money. It's getting, the sentiment has changed. So how do we do it? These, these principles are still exactly the same. So, um, you know, how I started, um, how I started basically was I started a meetup and again, a great way to get started is to, bring value and what that can look like. They can look like a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Everybody kind of knows that, right? Oh yeah, you got to bring value. You got to bring value. What, it, what really does it look like though? Well, here's an example that really uh, works for me. I'm going to see if I can take this off for a second here, just so people can see. I feel like sometimes um, if you change your view too, you can change it to speaker view so you don't see everybody at once. But bringing value. So I started a meetup in Pasadena, California. I approached somebody who had a successful meetup and I said, hey, um, you have a real estate meetup let's start another one that only does multifamily. And that's all we focus on. And the leader who was leading it, she'd been a mentor of mine. And, and she said, sure. I said, hey, I'll do all the work and you know, you just show up. And she said, that sounds great. So we did it. The first meeting, we promoted the heck out of it. We had 60 people. A guy came up to me I had never met before. And he said, hey, Bronson, I would do, I would do a deal with you. I would, I would invest in one of your deals. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. Like, I don't, I'm new to this. I don't even have a deal. But I, the salesperson in me knew I should get coffee with this guy. So I got coffee with this guy. I showed him a sample deal. Or, you know, it was a, basically like a fake deal. It wasn't an, an actual deal. I just said, hey, this is a sample deal of what a deal would look like. Is this something that you would be uh, interested in or, you know, be interesting to you? And he said, yeah. He's like, I'd, I'd put 100K in something like that. So from that first guy that I met, 
I had also met another guy in the same meeting who was a syndicator. And I basically introduced the two of them. And that's how I got my first 100K. I became a general partner in a deal. Now, in this business, as you know, if you've done a deal, I know a lot of people have ever done deals. Zero to one is the hardest, right? I made nods, right? The zero to one is the hardest. It's the hardest going from I've never done one to like, okay, now I've done one. And then there's this kind of rapid succession, right? There's, there's people talk about that, that it just kind of, it comes to you after a while. So in this process, that's kind of really what happened. But there's this quote by Jim Rohn, and it says, make yourself valuable to valuable people. And so I found a way, I found a partner, I found, you know, I was at this uh, investment event and I approached a really successful syndicator and I basically said, hey, how's it going raising money? And I didn't know this person, they had this huge network because they teach other people to syndicate, but they had all these doctors and business owners and lawyers and, you know, they were, they're never going to buy apartment buildings themselves, right? So basically I found a way to partner and say, hey, what if we created a funnel or some way to help uh, you know, help these people to actually invest more passively. So that sounds like a great idea. So over the next 18 months, we raised $15 million together. And it was, uh, you know, it, it was quite a journey. It took me from raising 100K to now I'm having calls all the time, right? I've had, you know, over, it's now over 1,300 calls. And, you know, in the beginning, you have no idea what you're doing. But the whole goal of all of this is really to try to bring value. Um, so this is really how it works in life, right? You know, if people get paid for solving problems and for bringing value. Uh, successful people have lots of problems that they're always thinking about how to solve them. And a lot of people will go to successful people and they'll say, hey, I want you to mentor me, or hey, I want you to do this for me, or hey, I want this from you. But you know, one trick to this is you can go to people that are much more successful than you and try to ask them, what is it you, what's a challenge you're having in your business? Or how is this area of your business working? Or how are you addressing this? And I promise you, like almost nobody's asking successful people that question, right? They're asking it all the time. But if you, if you want to be bright and you want to have somebody say, oh, this person's a little different, start thinking about someone's business and what might be important to them or just ask them, hey, you know, how can I, how, how can I help, help this or can we work together to solve this? So that's a way you can bring value. And I think if you're getting started, partnerships are really, really important, right? How many of you have really benefited from having partnerships? And you know, a few of you, I see a few hands. Yeah, a lot of you have had partnerships that every single one of this is a business you can't really do on your own, right? You need other people to help you. So um, also, this is another thing that happens too. When we talk to investors, we can have this idea of, hey, you know, invest in my deal. We have kind of this, there, there's a vibe that we put out, right? That we need, we need their money more than they need the deal necessarily, right? It's almost this idea of like, hey, I... I I, I just, you know, you can call them three or four times or you're, or you're constantly sending emails out or, hey, just making sure that you, sometimes I'll get three or four reminders for someone's deal. And I'm like, I don't think that's necessarily the vibe you want to put out there, right? You want to be able to put out something that is, it, it builds a little more scarcity, right? You're saying like, hey, you know, is it really about your deal or is it really about what they need? Is it really about something that when they see the deal, it actually helps them to get where they want to go? And so, um, you know, when you think about bringing value, it really is about trying to help someone else get to solve a problem or to get where they want to go. So it could be a tax problem. This is a lot of people I talked with, a lot of people have tax problems they're trying to solve. People pay way too much in taxes. We talk a lot about how to reduce taxes uh, or maybe eliminate taxes to zero, which is possible. I think my tax rate the last few years has been about 1%. Uh, and some of that just because I live in California, but um, trying to reduce taxes as much as possible. Um, helping people to get cash flow to be able to retire, right? People want to figure out a way to be able to retire. A lot of people that are wealthy, they don't know how to step away because if they don't work, they're not making money and also reducing the risk in the stock market. Um, so value, what, is it, what does it look like? I talked about the vibe. Make sure you're putting out the right vibe. You're, you're trying to actually be helpful, actually bring value. And you know, it may be that by you talking with somebody and realizing, you know, I can't help you but I'm going to refer you to Ferris or I'm going to refer you to Ronnie because they, they can help you and they've got this product or this service or this investment, you know, that, that actually builds a lot of trust, right? Because you're, you're believing that, hey, I'm going to help this person get where they want to go. And that's striking. Of course, you know, if I refer somebody to Ronnie or refer somebody to Ben, like they're going to really appreciate that. And maybe they'll reciprocate. But regardless, it's just about being as helpful as you can. So for any of you, even offline here, if I can be of help to you, please feel free to reach out to me. I'll leave my contact information at the end. I want to help you get where you want to go. And I think when that comes across as genuine, people see that you're not just doing this for your own goals or your own stuff. So bring value. So that's the first thing. Um, you know, this is basically, do you know what this picture is here? Anybody know what this is? This is a, uh, a cross between a, a rhino and an elephant, and it's called a elephino. 
So this is kind of like most people's financial plan of the LF I know. I know, you know, they have no idea what they're doing. So if you're trying to bring value, think about, you know, someone here is lost. 98% of people that should be doing syndications don't even know about it. I just had a call with somebody earlier today. You know, they had 2.5 million in a retirement fund. They didn't know what syndication was. They've worked in the mortgage space, whatever. We have something that people need, right? So if we can help them, we can get them out of this LFI no kind of state here. So uh, that's kind of a fun one. Um, so action steps, you know, what will you do to create value? We're going to talk about this a little later about blogs, videos, helping others, solving problems for others, and really asking successful people about challenges in their business. And I think that's something that as you get to know people that are a step or two or three ahead of you, if you can find a way to do that that's tactful and you can kind of really take note of what they're doing and watch what they learn from them, but just think about, hey, how's the way I, what's a way I can really add value here? That will really help them. It will help you. And it really can bring you to the next level. I'll explain a little bit about that here in a minute. Um, so this was a event um, that I went to. Everybody else doing okay? Everybody's good? Just want to make sure I'm not dragging on too long here without... Uh, Okay, cool. And if people do have questions, I can I can see the chat here. I didn't think I'd be able to see the chat, but I can see the chat. Um, so this was uh, an investor summit that I went to. Um, I know some of you guys know these guys. These are the real estate guys, and they do a summit every year. It's a very expensive event, uh, about $7,000 to go. There are other events that you can go to. There's a lot of great masterminds and groups and things like that. But to me, this in 2019, this really kind of blew my mind. It talked about syndication, talked about raising money, talked about precious metals, alternative assets. Um, and while I was there, um, I, you know, did a lot of networking. I did a lot of what I was talking about, where I asked questions and I tried to really learn. I tried to just really try to get into the mind of where other people are. And this is just a little side note. This picture is from their last summit. They didn't believe so it used to be on a cruise, but you can kind of see me. I don't know if you can see my cursor here, but I'm kind of in the back. Um, that's me right there. And so, um, I'm basically on stage, oops, I'm on stage now with, uh, a lot of these influencers. We've got Daniel DiMartino Booth, Chris Martinson, George Gammon, uh, Tom Burns has raised about a half billion dollars, Dave Zuck as well, just some really amazing, amazing people. And so, um, but anyway, things like this, these, these events, um, I love virtual events. I think they're good, but I think when you can get in a place where you're in an in-person event, and I know Disrupt has a great one day event. I don't know how many of you were in Seattle recently. I wasn't able to make that event. I had a, a wedding on the exact same day, but I'm going to be in Atlanta. I'm going to be speaking there as well or sharing something there as well, but getting to as many events, meetups, conferences as you can, it's super powerful. So it's all about getting in the right room. So if you know this guy, this is Robert Kiyosaki, uh, you know, being able to be, you know, don't be the smartest person in the room, right? If you're the smartest person in the room, uh, it's been said, it's time to find a new room, right? So you're always going to be, you're the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. And sometimes you've got to pay to be in the right rooms. You got to pay to be in a mastermind. You've got to be paid in to be in, in certain, you know, go to certain events and some of them are pretty expensive. But, um, you know, like I talked about, I approached this successful syndicator, made a partnership really through being in the right room. So I just shared this. Um, oh, this is actually kind of talking about this principle. This is Charlie Tremendous Jones. And he says, you will be the same person in five years, except for the books you read and the people that you meet. So this is really talking about two things, talking about networking, and education. And I think education doesn't stop after you've done your first deal or your 10th deal or your 50th deal. You should always be learning. You should always be learning what is new out there, what's happening. Um, and also the people that you meet, you never know the person that you're going to sit across from, the person you're going to meet. There's been so many times I was actually just, I was at a disrupt event. Um, I can't remember which one it was. Um, I actually met an investor sitting across the table. Um, I think it was, I think it was in Houston earlier this year, right? So that the guy invested 150,000 in a deal. So that stuff happens, right? You meet people, it's serendipitous, it happens. Um, so, you know, value networking and education. So a lot of people, I remember I had a call with a guy who lived in Kansas and he was trying to raise money. He had some small multifamily stuff he did, he did in Kansas. And I asked him, I said, he's part of some virtual things. I said, have you, do you ever go to events? He says, no, I just, I just stay at home. I don't go to events. So I just, I said, well, man, you really need, <laughs> really need to get out to events. If you're not going to events, you're really missing out a lot because you're going to meet influencers that are there to talk to people that I, I'll be able to have conversations with people that I wouldn't normally have be able to have a conversation with you're big influencers. I'll also be able to talk with regular investors I wouldn't have met otherwise. So this is really the second secret is valuing networking education. Now people know this, this is stuff that we've heard before but I'm gonna give you some specific examples of how I've used this to really grow my platform and grow my reach and used it to really raise money. So stay tuned here. So networking is really being in the right rooms. And like I said, if you're the smartest person in the room, trying to find a new room. So over on the side here, um, this kind of got cut off here a little bit, but you can see this is Robert and Carrie Helms. I, I was gonna be in Dallas for an event and I, I'd never seen Coldplay live before. And I thought, you know, I, I don't wanna go to Coldplay 
but I don't want to go by myself, right? I want to be able to in, invite some friends and kind of be there with uh, some other, you know, people that I'm going to adjust my light here. It's a little too bright. Oh, uh, yeah, there we go. Um, and so what I did is I thought about who would I like to be there with? And so I invited my friends. This is on the lower right. I've got Courtney here and her husband. And then the guy in the back on this lower picture here, this is Jason Hartman. So on the lower picture there. And on the left, if you guys know who that is, that's Harry Dent. Harry Dent is, uh, he's, he's a little bit of a catastrophizer. He, uh, uh, but anyway, I've always kind of admired his stuff. And so I thought it would be great to be able to do that. And of course, I got Robert and Kara Helms and on top. So it was a lot of fun. And you know, it cost me some money to do this. It may have cost me you know, two grand to do this event or something to pay for eight people to go, but we had a blast. It was a lot of fun. And since then, of course, I've had a closer relationship with Jason. We're about ready to do, do a deal coming up here. Harry was just on my event recently. I just did an event with him, Lizette Zhang, and uh, one other person, you know, of course, oh, Jason Hart, Jason was there as well. So uh, it was awesome, right? So to be able to do this, to be able to create it, uh, successful people are looking for also, they're looking for being in the right room. So if you can create a mastermind or you can create an event or you can create something that people find value from, right? The, every single person that came to us, they had a great time because it was cold play, but they also had a good time hanging with each other, right? So if you can be somebody who creates uh, you know, value for people of value or people that are doing big things, that could be super powerful. Um, so just like I said, Jim Rohn, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. This, this principle really applies in just about every way. If you want to lose weight and you know, if you get around people that are really active, uh, you know, you start hanging out, you're going to eat at different places. They're going to, they're going to teach you things. You're going to learn about it. Uh, financially, if you want to grow to your wealth, you get around people that are at the next step, it's, it's going to absolutely change you. And so this principle is absolutely huge. So if you think about it, you're taking notes, just write down maybe the five people that you do spend the most time with, whether it's with you and your family or friends, or who are the people that you're actually spending time with. And if you want to get to the next level, and sometimes again, you have to pay to be in the room, then you're going to learn from that, right? So these, these events that we go to, even this event here, we're going to, hopefully you're going to learn something, some takeaway that you walk away from, and it's going to begin to shape who you are. And you're going to hopefully get a nugget to say, hey, I can do this particular thing that's going to cause this change in my business. So um, as I mentioned before, I think it was $6,000 I paid to be at the, this investor summit. Uh, well, when you pay a lot for an event, uh, it's important to think about, you know, what, where are you going to be? If, if an event's, you know, free and it's a run of the back of the room type of seminar, and, you know, I see some heads shake and it's like, you know, you know what you're going to get, right? You're going to get a pitch, big pitch at the end and it's going to be, you know, you're not, you're probably not going to find the highest quality person there, but if it's expensive, it's a $6,000 thing for an event to get, to be in the room, uh, who's going to be there. It's going to be basically people that are wealthy. It's really two people, people that are wealthy and serious or successful real estate operators. So sometimes the more expensive an event is, sometimes the better of an event it will be. And some of you that are part of masterminds, you know this is true, or you've been to specific events, but uh, people are often resistant to pay money to be in masterminds because they look at uh, expensive events. I, I have a relative recently, I'm really trying to encourage him to get into real estate, and he couldn't get over paying you know, $250 for a one-day event and, or that he was sad, it was going to be after. I was thinking, man, there are people flying from all over the country for this event and you don't want to, it's in your town and you don't want to actually go to this event because, you know, it's 250 bucks. And I just think like it's, it's really short-sighted. So we invest in our own education. We invest in networking and serendip serendipitous things always happen. So I've kind of talked about this a little bit. I'm kind of skim over this, but even uh, last year, not this summer, the summer before I went, I paid, you know, six or $7,000 to go. I found 500K in new investment from, from new investors that had never invested with me before. So paying, you know, this year I'm planning to spend over 50,000 just to be in the right rooms, to be in the right groups. Um, if you shoot me an email, I can let you know what groups I'm a part of, or I'm happy to share that as well. But, you know, there are many groups and it's just important to think about where you're going to be. So uh, we talked a little bit about networking and the power of networking and kind of what that actually means and what that looks like. Um, the power of education, um, you know, I do run a local meetup. I think meetups are really powerful. I also think there's no substitute for being at national conferences. So I go to, I'm going to a conference. Um, I'm actually hosting the blockchain. I'm not hosting, I'm emceeing the blockchain and real estate conference in Austin, Texas, which is going to be fun. So my friend, Michael Flight is doing that. It's how blockchain technology works within real estate, right? I don't know a ton about that, but I'm going to have fun emceeing that, right? So that's a chance for me to be able to learn, have some education as well as network with a lot of other people that will be at that conference. So when you go to conferences, and I probably go to 15 national conferences a year, it costs money, it costs time, but something always, I mean, when you look back, something amazing always happens. So look at that. Uh, also books, uh, you know, podcasts, programs, courses, mastermind groups, uh, education. I think you know, the average American, I'm going to talk about books here for a second. 
Um, and this does directly relate with raising money. I know you're thinking, well, how does this work with raising money? But uh, you know, a book really becomes a tutor for you. It's kind of a lost art where people sit and just read a book, right? We're on the news, we're on our phones, we're on TV, we're doing different things, but to sit and read a book. So I made a goal in 2020 to read uh, 52 books and I finished the year with 87 books. So thanks to COVID, I was able to finish a lot more books, but it's been said that the average American reads less than 12 books a year. Um, half of Americans read less than four books a year and the average CEO reads 50 to 60 books a year. So just think about that for a second, right? If you wanna change your life, I mean, you wanna have something smart and bright to say when you're around successful people, if you're reading, you'll have something good to share. Now, if you're reading romance novels, maybe not as much, but you know, regardless, if you read, if you read the right kind of books, you're gonna have something really powerful to share. So this was my book. Um, this is actually hasn't been updated. This is kind of what I've read for the year. I underline if I really like the book, some of you that are total, you know, reading nerds, you can take a picture of that. And I've got a few more that I've finished since then. But uh, again, I think this is directly related to helping yourself improve, helping yourself grow. And it makes you more relatable when you talk to people that are very successful, typically that are also very interested in learning and growth as well. Um, so as far as education, well, there's a lot of podcasts out there. I know, I think Ferris, you guys have a podcast as well. This is my show. It's called the Mailbox Money Show, where I educate investors, um, how to get mailbox money, more passive cash flow. I had some great guests on there. Um, but action steps for you. So again, this, this is just going to be another presentation or another event, unless you actually decide that you're going to be able to take some action. And we're kind of coming to the final part here. We're going to do some, some Q and A in a little bit. We've got one more point to go through, but uh, what conferences are you going to attend and what meetups are you going to go to? Are you going to start a meetup? That's a great way. Like I mentioned, I started a meetup and on my first meetup, I, I was, I didn't know anything, but because I was a leader in that space, somebody said, hey, I'll invest with you. Uh, will you join a mastermind? And what are the things that you're going to do to get in the right room? So networking and education, super powerful. Um, and then this is a big thing that, especially if you're new, um, I wanted to see, I don't know if I can see everybody, but um, I wanted to see how many of you are, are a little bit newer to this. Um, maybe just stick your hand up. Can I see? I guess I got a few. Everybody here has been around for a while. If you're a little bit newer to it, I know there's a lot of people a little bit newer to this. This can feel very overwhelming. Uh, maybe you can just put in the chat if you feel like you're a little bit newer for this. Yeah, I see, I see some hands going up there. That's great. Um, so the challenge is that people know you, right? They're going to know you as you're the person that does this, right? You work your job. You're a teacher. You're a lawyer. You're a business owner. For me, I was medical sales guy. They know you as that, right? And the challenge is when you're trying to do something different, you can feel like you've got all the information where you're going here, but people don't know that, right? You just imagine if you go to your mechanic, your car mechanic you've been to for years, and they're, you know, you've known them for five or 10 years, and they start trying to pitch you on a real estate deal, right? That doesn't really make sense unless you've had some conversation about real estate, right? So people knew me as medical sales Bronson, right? They didn't know me as real estate guy, right? So I had to change that. And that can be a little challenging to do while you're still working a full-time job. It can be done, but you got to think about how you do it. So I talked about, you know, starting the meetup in LA. I was still medical Bronson, but LinkedIn said medical sales. But what I did is I started to really uh, begin to tell a different story. And I, and I started to look at how a partner, the guy that I, who was the big influencer that I approached, and we basically raised all this money together and it helped him because they were having trouble raising money. They didn't have anybody in that seat, right? So I found a way to solve a problem and really to do that. But I, I learned that he was telling a story that was very compelling. And so I looked at this, I was having you know 15 to 20 calls a week with investors while still working my full-time job. But I, was, I looked at him, I was like, how are you getting all these leads? And he was just saying, it's, it's the system that I use and really it's it's the secret that comes down to that, you know, people say content is king. You've heard that, right? Content is king, content is king. And I would say, you know, in some ways it's true, but I'd say really distribution is king. And what I mean by that is getting the right content to the right person at the right time. And there's certain things you can do that it's not just creating stuff, right? You can, you know, I know people that have been podcasting for years and they've got, you know, a hundred people listening to their stuff and it's it's fine, there's nothing wrong with it. But, you know, after time, the more you do something, the more you can target it, the more focused you can make it, the more it will allow, and you get it in front of the right person, the more it will allow you to really re reach somebody. So, like I mentioned, I was a medical sales guy. Um, I, I tried to get a bunch of people to invest in my first deal. I had 60, 62 calls with friends or family and zero invested. It was so disheartening that I met that guy who invested in my deal. I'll be forever grateful for that, that he became my, my first investor, which was, which was fun. Um, so the idea of content, right? Creating content that works for you. The challenge is that you or I, we can only be in one place at a time, right? We really can't be everywhere at one time. So like I mentioned, my partner, we were getting uh, 15 to 20 new investor leads uh, on his platform. 
you had a successful podcast and ebook and online marketing. You had a large email list, actually have 40,000 people. And you know, this is the equivalent of getting leads while you sleep, the equivalent of Warren Buffett, unless you learn how to make money while you sleep, you'll work until you die. So the idea that you, know, you can be one-on-one -on -one with people or you can be one to many. And if you can find ways to do that, content is created one time and it continues to work for you. And there's a way actually you can create content and repurpose it multiple times. And I'm gonna get into that in a second, but there's a, a, uh, a system that will consistently generate, generate leads that are eager to invest 100K. Um, so when people see you, you know, what do they see? And I want you to just think about yourself for a minute. What story are you telling about yourself? If I look at your LinkedIn, what will I see? If I look, if I you show up in a room or even at a conference, maybe you can't change your LinkedIn right now because it will threaten your job. And I can relate with that. Um, so there are ways actually on LinkedIn where you can block specific people so that your boss can't see what you're doing on LinkedIn. And it doesn't show that you block them. It just shows they can't find you. So that's a little tip. If somebody's like kind of at this, I'm, I want to switch, but I don't want certain people to see it. You actually can block certain people on there. So again, what value are you adding to them to that conversation? This was um, this was last year. This was like half of last year, but I, I looked at um, trying to say, well, how much you know have I raised uh, you know for the first half of 2021? Um, you know, if you look at this left or the competition, every average person is exposed to 4,000 to 10,000 ads per day or messages per day. Uh, it, it's a competitive world, and if we're calling somebody or we're talking at one time, people. Uh, we get lost in the shuffle. So that's why creating content and creating more content is the key to reach more people. And it also gives you credibility. You know, when I look up, uh, you know, if I was looking up who Ferris is or who Ben was, and I look up online, I'll see all this stuff about them. Right? I'll see their website. I'll see their, uh, you know, I'll see their YouTube channel. I'll see the, all their, their podcasting. I'll see all their interviews and all the different track record stuff they've done. So you can see all that. Um, so I was looking at this kind of, where did I raise money from a lot of people? And this is kind of, again, as I was kind of getting going on my own after kind of not working with uh, my partner uh, in the past. So this was a uh, long time friends was at the top here was about a little over a million and the referred, which is the bright green was about 1.5. It was about half of this came from people that I knew. And a lot of it was other events that I met in person. There were some paid ads. There were some through other networks. And then it, this is really interesting. 275,000 of this was through um, just YouTube videos. Actually in the last, in the last 30 days, I've had two investors invest hundred K each. Just simply, they met me on YouTube. They just found my videos on YouTube. So it's amazing how that stuff, the more you get to where you scale, when you're someone like Grant Cardone, one of these big things, like you just have so many leads coming in because people are always reaching out, right? Um, so again, you may look at this and please don't get you know turned off or distracted or just saying like, oh, that's just not me. I'm just not the tech guy because I'm that guy. I'm the guy like, man, I just, I can't do this. It's just too much. And I totally get it. If you, anybody felt that way before, like, you know, I'm not the tech guy. There's no way I could do this. But the powerful thing about all this is that it does live on, it lives forever. And once you understand how to use your CRM, you learn how to use automations and social media and some of this, if you can delegate a lot of this stuff, you can hire people, you can do things that these are all systems that go for you. So for me now, we do 10 videos a month. I record four just kind of explainer videos. It used to take me like four hours to record a 10 minute video. Uh, now it takes me, you know, it, it, well, actually for, for one 10 minute video, now I can do like four videos in about two or three hours. And I just record in my living room. And I set everything up, it's much faster. Uh, social media where people find you. But the amazing thing too is that this stuff can be repurposed, right? So if I record one video that can be transcribed, that can be sent over to my person in the US based uh, who's who's a blog writer who turns that into a blog. They put that in my weekly email is the first point of that. And it goes on my website and LinkedIn, right? So it's, it's purposed for something else. Then they can use that for snippets that are put on social media, Instagram or other sorts, you know, little, little short videos. And so, um, you know, the idea of you don't have to be doing, it makes it look like you're everywhere, but you know, the more you can basically produce that it can be repurposed, really the better. Um, like I mentioned, the perception is you're everywhere. Uh, this guy, Ellis Hammond, who's a friend of mine, we're partners now on a, uh, a group called Kingdom REI, which is a coaching group. We actually help people raise money and find deals. So that's something I'm doing now as a money recapital raising coach. Um, he says that he asked this question at my meetup. He said, how many of you guys are posting on LinkedIn uh, how many of you are on LinkedIn? And like every single hand went up, right? Everybody's on LinkedIn. How many of you are posting on LinkedIn five times a week? And like very few people like me and him were like, the only ones. how many of you are posting three times a week? And so the challenge is like, if you start posting on LinkedIn, everyone, all of your network will just think you're everywhere. They'll just be like, oh my gosh, I see your stuff all the time. Well, like, what would I post on there, right? Well, you just post, you go to conferences. I'm doing this. I'm, you know, sometimes all, the big strategy of mine is I'll go to an event. I'll take a bunch of selfies with some of the leaders or people in the group, and then I'll tag everybody on the post and it'll get like two or 3000 views. And then somebody will reach out and like, Hey, I think I should invest in your stuff. So it's, again, you, what you're doing is you're telling a different story and you're changing the reality. So question really is, 
to start telling your story. Um, uh, one thing I didn't mention is I, I talked a little bit about Harry Dent and Jason Hartman. We do these these monthly webinars, and we've actually had Ferris on there as well, and and Ken McElroy. We've got actually one coming up with Ken McElroy and Michael Blanc and Buck Joffrey, who's raised Buck Joffrey's raised over six hundred million dollars, and just talking about what's happening right now in multifamily. Right, that's a pretty interesting. Like, the ability to kind of be in the center of that, and ask questions, and host that. It gives me the ability to be uh, perceived as a peer, right? Even though I feel like I'm, I'm a smaller brand than all of those guys, I can be perceived kind of as a peer because I'm in the, in the middle leading that. Actually, I saw Ferris recently. He was on a panel with Brandon Turner and Robert Helms, and there was a whole group of, you know, Ken McElroy was there, a bunch of folks. When you're a part of something like that, when you can create the room, right? We talked about creating the room that can really create something powerful for you. So, um, you know, if you can start telling your story, if you don't have a weekly or monthly email or YouTube videos or something that you're putting out regularly, this is, I think is a good time to commit and just say, Hey, I'm going to start doing this. And if you start doing it consistently, um, you know, you will see a result. A lot of people think of raising money is like hunting, right? You got to go out and you get, it's like a, like you're a sales dog. You're going to go out and you're going to attack somebody and you're going to find it. You're going to you know, take the kill and bring it back, whatever. That's not how this works. I think the best way, right? The best way is you do as a farmer, right? You're constantly planting, you're constantly watering, you're cultivating. And if you pull on that, you know, you go up to an apple tree and you pull on the apple and it's not ready to come off, you don't yank it off, right? You just, okay, you leave it there and you go to the next one. And that's how it works is the fruit will become ripe at different times. So touching on this real quick, I have this program called Active Campaign. Uh, there's different CRMs that are out there. I think if you're not familiar with this, you can use MailChimp, you can use some other simpler ones, but this allows you to send out this stuff automatically and just post what you're learning, post, you know, how has real estate helped you? And the biggest thing is consistency, right? I just amazed when people actually read my stuff. They're like, oh yeah, I read your stuff. And I'm like, oh wow, like I didn't write it. I had, you know, I recorded something and then my writer wrote it and you read it. That's awesome. So putting things out different ways. So uh, I talked about pictures, events, um, and we're doing Q and A. So Networking education, just a little summary here, networking education, being in the right room, sharing an opportunity and offering to join an amazing group. Uh, oh, this is basically the group I'm a part of now. This is my contact, just Bronson at bronsonequity.com. So if you want to touch base on money raising, coaching, or finding deals, this is what we're doing as a part of this mastermind. Uh, or if you have any questions, I'd love to uh, take questions now, or you can email me there at Bronson at Bronson Equity. And this is my ebook that I have. So if you want to connect on that, that's my ebook, which is uh, how to use inflation to your advantage. So I really enjoyed writing that. It's about 50 pages, just some strategies of using debt, using real estate to buy, or, you know, using um, uh, debt to buy real estate or other assets. So, so that's what I've got. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing here. I don't know if we uh, move on to questions or if there's other things here. I don't know if I went too long. I didn't really get a time. Um, I'm supposed to go or you're you know. good, man. You're good. You're good. Plenty of time, plenty of time. And, and right. yeah, folks, I, I do encourage you. If you do have questions for Bronson, you know, throw them in the chat. You know, we, we'd love to kind of, you know, kind of keep it open as far as Q and A goes, but I just want to thank you. I mean, a lot of that stuff's gold, you know, I mean, there, that really is, you know, the, the, the playbook that we have used over the course of our career too, right? You know, you have to add value, have to create content, right? You know, providing a platform for other people to get on and speak is huge, right? You know, you're not selling them an opportunity. You're, 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 you're allowing them to come into an opportunity too. I think that's a big shift that I had to come because I was a sales guy like you, right? You know, you have to, you know, how am I providing, you know, value to people versus selling them on something and trying to get money from them? And so I think that that's, that's all gold. Um, you know, so let's see, we got a couple coming in here. After you receive funding to buy a property, what are the immediate next steps? New to real estate. So uh, you want to you handle that one? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I was thinking about it too. Um, you, know, you guys could basically have done this presentation. You're creating such amazing rooms at your events that you do and even even this room. So I'm so grateful for that. Um, yeah. So I know it obviously sounds like you're kind of new to real estate, uh, MJM, but uh, yeah, when you buy, basically when you receive funding to buy a property, the immediate next steps. So when you're raising money, um, there are some legalities around this that you have to keep in mind. You can't just you know, raise money from people you meet, you've got to think about, you know, to do this in a compliant way. There are some ways you can learn syndication. There's some events that kind of teach you about it. There's actually a good book by Hunter Thompson called uh, Raising Capital for Real Estate. That's a very good book. So if you haven't read that book, that's a great book to kind of start with. But, um, you know, typically all of the money we raise will go into uh, the bank account for the LLC or we'll go into an escrow account 
and it will basically be held for the purchase. So once we close on the deal, then we basically just really, you know, take action to try to operate and about 70% of the work, at least I'm told, I don't really do as much of the asset management, but it's, it's basically after you close. So so let's say, oh, the money raising is easy. It's actually performing on the deal. It's actually is more work. That's the tough part, right? Where the, <laughs> where the rubber meets the road. Exactly. So one thing that I thought was interesting, because earlier in your presentation, you said, okay, I did 62 calls with friends and family. And and I've, I've told my story on my first raise. It was a total cluster. Um, you know, and, and I had to essentially convince my parents to invest and, you know, my sisters were pissed off, you know, I didn't get invited to, to the Thanksgiving dinner that year, the whole thing. It was just, a, it was a bad situation, right? You know, but it was funny to see now you're having a little bit of success. You've proven that this is not some wild goose chase of yours. And now you're having friends invest. Well, guess what? You know, my family, my friends are some of my biggest investors as well now, right? Sometimes you have to prove it out that you're no longer the medical sales guy. You're no longer that person that's on your LinkedIn profile that you have, you know, you have educated yourself and, and gone in a different direction. And this is truly legit, right? You know, would you say that that's probably true, right? You're able to kind of convince the naysayers. Yeah, I think it's, you know, the biggest thing about all this, it can be really frustrating in the beginning. This is not like an easy thing of like, hey, look, just look for an easy job you can do that's just going to be cake, whatever. It, it's hard. And, but what I realized is that no matter how hard this is, no matter how much hard work and how many no's you get, uh, what you're doing is you're, again, you're telling a new story. And if you really believe the story, then those people, those 62 people that I had conversations with, I'd say, 10 or 15 of them have invested now, right? Just like you, a lot of them become big investors of mine. So uh, in the beginning, it's it's hard because it just takes time to tell the story. I just had somebody I've been talking to literally for four years about investing and they just invested in the first deal with me. But um, you know, that stuff happens. So it can feel like it's an uphill battle. But I think that another thing you can really encourage yourself with when it's hard and it's frustrating is that this is a very long-term thing. And also the skills that you're learning, if you're learning to raise money, it's an incredibly valuable skill to know yes. how to do. It's incredibly, I can't, I can't even understand. Like anybody who ever wants to do any business, anything, if you can raise money, if you can convince people to follow you and you're like, hey, I'm putting money, money in and, and you do it too, um, it's incredibly powerful. Absolutely. No, no, no. I, I, you're, you're planting seeds too is another thing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's a couple just whales that I've met over the years and kept in contact and, you know, we'd have calls, you know, maybe once a quarter and, you know, the timing wasn't right or something was just not there. They didn't like the deal. But when they, when they, when these guys came in, I mean, these guys were dropping 500, a million dollars in the deal, right? So, I also encourage people to just be persistent too, right? You know, sometimes timing's just not on or, or just not there, right? You know, it might not truly be the right time for them, you know, or might not be the right deal, but don't get discouraged. Keep following up with them. If they've shown some interest, you're eventually going to, that, that, that seed will grow too. So it's important for people to realize that, but we got a couple questions in here, man. So when you sure. came in, when you came into the industry, how did you learn all the different aspects of the business? Um, and then follow-up question also, did you ever feel when you were making content in the beginning, how can you speak on a subject you were new in? So there's great questions. Yeah. So it can feel very overwhelming. You come in and you're like, I got to learn this and how's the legal structure and what's a 506B or a 506C or what, you know, how does syndication even work? But the thing we don't realize, and I've learned this from a couple of people, is that uh, you know talking about syndication? If you've read like one book about real estate syndication, you probably know more than ninety nine percent of people about syndication, right? So you may not be like you know know more than all the experts, but again, I, I've I've never really positioned myself as like the expert in real estate, or expert in multifamily. I've I've tried to be a leader, and I've tried to say, hey, I'm creating this room, I'm creating this event, and I'm with experts, and yeah, I want to create. And over time, I want to do want to create more stuff, but again. You're just trying to help people in something that you're passionate about. So you become like a cheerleader of this thing that you're really excited about and you're telling people about. Um, and so I think, you know, that's a very common thing. They call it, you know, I think I call it the imposter syndrome, right? Like you feel like, who am I to be like the one actually doing this? 
but it's, it's something that every successful person goes through. And I just think that, you know, in the beginning, you just have to be willing to do it. I think where you can learn from it, I did mention there's some conferences. Uh, Disrupt has some great, you know, the, uh, the one day events they do are awesome. Uh, the real estate guys, they've got some awesome events as well. I go to, I'm good. They have a syndication event the 16th and 17th of September in Dallas. This will be my fifth time going. I literally find investors there. I, you know, they, I've become, now they kind of help spotlight me because I've been successful and I've been a part of their group. But um, you, you'll find you'll find ones that will be helpful and talk to other investors. You'll find more as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and and Brad Quartz had asked a question about the Atlanta event. So, Brad, check it out. It's November 12th in Atlanta. You can check it out at www.mfinvestornetwork.com. We'll have some great speakers. Bronson, hopefully joining us out there. Oh. Um, let's see here. So. Which books, conferences, or courses do you recommend to learn real estate investing in depth? I mean, I think he just kind of mentioned a couple conferences, right? You know, he had his, maybe you could put that slide up where all your books are. You yeah. know, I mean, that was a pretty extensive list, folks. And then I, I saw some other stuff that was just good, you know, general books that you should be reading and, and, and keeping up with, right? You know, yeah. so here's a, here's a, here's some book. I mean, you know, I, I read pretty widely, though. I mean, I think, um, Hunter Thompson's book I mentioned, Raising Capital for Real Estate. Michael Blanc has a great book called Financial Freedom with Real Estate Investing. Joe Fairless has a great book about, it's called The Best Ever uh, a multi, I don't know, it's Apartment Syndication Book or something. Those are all good books. But um, you know, the more you read, the more it leads you to other things and it can open up more doors for sure. Absolutely. And then uh, another question here, what are some steps you should take before raising money? Um, steps before raising money. I think I honestly, I started, and this might sound kind of silly, but I think a lot of people start out and they're like, you know, should I be raising money or should I be doing deals? Should I be finding deals? Cause it's usually either finding deals or raising money is how people get started. Um, and I, you know, even though I had 10 years of sales experience, I did well in sales. I was thinking, man, I'm going to find a deal. I'm going to bring it to somebody else. So I, I underwrote, you know, I got an underwriting tool. I underwrote at least 50 to hundred deals. And so I, I know how to underwrite. I know how to get into a deal. I know how to look at it, kick the tires. How's it working? I look at the assumptions. What's the rent growth? What's the exit, the cap rate? All these different things. So that when you, and I think that's really valuable because if you're trying to raise money for something and somebody asks you a question, now in the beginning, you're not going to know it. And that's okay. And be comfortable with like not knowing whatever that thing is, right? Like it's okay to not know and say, let me check and get back to you. But over time, that should inspire you to learn so that when you're talking with somebody who is a little more sophisticated, you start to get a grasp and you can actually teach them some things, right? Because people want to buy from people that are smart. So if you can have, that's also why I read books, right? It's because it keeps, my, it keeps me very sharp. I can have a conversation with people about a lot of different topics. And people can say, oh, this is somebody who's actually put a lot of thought into their investment thesis and different things as well. So um, hopefully that helps. Absolutely. Yeah. So the, the Haley asked uh, for the book list again. <laughs> <laughs> I should you, might, just, uh, you might just want to drop that thing in the chat or something, man. I, yeah. Uh, I don't, I'll, I'll see know. if I can find the link. I'll drop You know, you can take yeah. a picture of it. Just take your phone out literally and take a picture of your screen. That's the way yeah, you you're, you're never going to be able to jot it down yeah. quickly enough. No, right? no, you, you don't, don't write it. Just take a picture. And again, I underlined the ones I liked the most. So that's kind of a little key to that. But, um, and I've, I've added three or four more since I'm reading one on Vladimir Putin right now, which is very interesting. So I, you know, I read very widely and it's, it, it just, it helps, you know, it helps for a lot of application. So. Absolutely. All right. So, uh, looks like, uh, somebody wants an internship. So do you have any suggestions for getting an internship with an operator? Um, it's, it's a good point. You know, a lot of people want to know how can I, how can I get started? What can I do? And again, I think it really comes down to, you know, when you're around somebody very successful, um, you know, ask, ask more questions than you do trying to impress somebody on all, you know, right. Uh, there's kind of the Socratic method where, you know, instead of just like they say, Socrates would go around and like, he wouldn't, he would just go around and say, I don't know anything. What do you know? And he just go learn from different people about what they would say. And he would be able to get everybody to share everything with him. So I think if, again, if you're willing to do that, you're able to go around. It depends. I think it depends. Oh, it looks like the Kingly group's looking for acquisition interns. So, so there you go, Dr. Ronnie. Uh, but, you know, it all starts with just asking, putting it out there kind of like you did. And then just also saying, hey, you know, another thing you could do is say, what advice would you have for someone like me? What are the biggest challenges that you're facing right now? And, you know, or wh what area of, of, of problems are, are, you know, what are you trying to do right now? And I think if someone approached me and said, hey, help me really understand, I want to give this amount of time. I'd be like, hmm, do they fit this? You know, do I feel like they could actually, would it be more work for me to have them working with me? Or would it be something I could actually give them things and we could actually make something really work, right? 
Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they got to obviously have your core values and integrity and all that right. good stuff. But ultimately, it goes back to your, your meta point, which is all about adding value. Right. Like I have people that, you know, they yeah. want to be an internship, but there's not they're not adding a lot of value. Right. You know, right. and so, you know, it'd be more me putting time and effort into them to educate them than them adding value to the transaction. And that's how a deal gets done, too. Right. You know, yeah. co GPs come together. This person's doing this. This person's doing that. You know, I mean, there's there's a sharing of that responsibility and everybody adds value because, as Bronson had mentioned, it's hard to do this stuff on your own. In fact, I don't know very many people that do it on their own beyond maybe one or two deals. Um, so, all right. So next question, and we might have to rapid fire this just so we can have a little bit of sure. networking time at the end. How much did you raise in your first deal? And how was the raise process? And what were some of the challenges you faced? Yeah, so the first deal, if you remember, I I, I didn't, I kind of went it out of sequence when I shared this, but I talked to 62 friends and family. I did a questionnaire with them. I had nobody invest. You know, I was just trying everything I could. I got nobody to invest. And then it was that guy who showed up to my meetup who said, I'd, I'd invest with you and he invested a hundred K. So I, you know, I, I promised, Hey, I'm going to try to raise 500 K. I raised hundred K. That was all I could get for my first deal. And then, um, you know, in the process of doing it, I had an experienced partner who, uh, you know, been doing it over 10 years, had had four or five deals and uh, it was great. You know, the nice thing about raising money is again, we think we have to know all of this, but if you have partners that have done it before, uh, it, that's going to be a huge asset, right? You're going to learn a ton. And I just say in the beginning, just be willing to learn, be willing to do whatever's asked of you, you know, get, you know, give more than what you take in the sense of just, Hey, anything you don't want to do, give it to me. I'll do it. Like that's how people become partners with people is they just, somebody sees, Oh, wow, this person is just given 110% and they're willing to do whatever it takes. And, um, you know, the worst thing is having partners that like you're constantly, if you're at a school project, right. And there's five of you and, you know, one person ends up doing all the work, right? Or you end up doing all the work. That's like the worst experience, right? So I just think, you know, in the beginning, it's just being open to uh, contribute as much as you can, learn as much as you can, and you'll learn a lot on your first deal for sure. Absolutely. So again, it's somewhat of along the same vein, right? What are the most common mistakes you see capital raisers make and how should we avoid them? Um, you know, I think, well, one of the mistakes people make is that they just, they don't really go after it. They don't really, you know, Tony Robbins, I'm a big fan of Tony Robbins. He says, it's in your moments of decision that your destiny is shaped. So it's the idea of when you actually make a decision, you know, by this time next year, I'm going to have done my first deal, or I'm going to have left my job or whatever. You, you just say, I'm going to do this, whatever it takes. Um, then you actually commit to it, right? I think a lot of people are kind of like, it's like, it's like a shiny object. Like, oh yeah, I'd love to do it. I'd love to get a my first big, you know, I had the small deal, the first deal we raised uh, 100K for, the second deal, working with my partner, we raised $3 million. My acquisition check was 44K, right? And that was awesome. Like that was, everybody wants that. Everybody thinks, oh, 44K, it's amazing. But there was hundreds of hours that went into that, right? That wasn't like it was just a gimme or it was a hammy. So again, I think you have to come to your own mind of just that you're, no matter what it takes, you're going to do this because you see the long-term value of it, right? Awesome. Awesome. All right. So another question, do you recommend taking out loans from banks to purchase a property? I'd say absolutely. I'm just going to go ahead and answer that one for you. You know, um, you know, it's all about leverage in this business. Debt historically is still very, very cheap. People don't let the news scare you, you know, um, you know, compared to, I remember when my parents moved down to Texas from Ohio, they assumed a loan on a single family house and it was 18%. So, you know, just, just take a, take into that consideration when you're looking at five, 6% interest rates, it's, it's a, not really all that bad. Right. Um, all right. So just kind of going through this, want to make sure I covered everything. Um, to, 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 I'm thinking whether to partner with another sponsor for capital raising or finding my own deals. What would you recommend and what should I consider? This is from uh, Anju uh, Martinez. Looks like uh, he's done his own deal. Or she's doing her own, her own deal. Um, you know, what do you think, man? I mean, I think if you're if you're doing if you want to scale, you gotta you gotta build a team, right? Now, is that with other partners that have their own firms or have are doing their own thing separately, or is that you know you're gonna go you know hire on staff and have your own team? Whether you're gonna you know whether you do it one way or the other, you need to have people around you. So um, you know, I, I don't know if that answered that question specifically. But, you know, yeah, if you want to continue to go and do more deals, you're going to need to have some people around you. I have some thoughts on that real quick, too, because I think there are people. So you guys at Disrupt, you guys do everything in-house. You're vertically integrated. You have everything. You have acquisitions. You have operations. You're doing it all in-house. 
Uh, and I think I think it's great. You get a lot more control over the property. Uh, Buck Joffrey, if you know Buck Joffrey, he's raised, he's a former physician. He's raised six hundred million for multifamily. He still does value add deals. You know, typically raises twenty thirty million per deal. He doesn't operate anything, right? He has partners that he works with that helps to do that. So I think you have to figure out where you fit. I think so. I think this person too, um, Andrew, it looks like you raised one point two million dollars recently. So uh, yeah, I think you just have to try to figure out where you fit. And if you do want to scale it out, like you like. Ben was saying you are going to need to find partners to help you with that. Absolutely. All right. So uh, Elena wants to know, what do you do for fun and who are the top five people you love to hang out with? Oh, that's a good question. Um, what do I do for fun? Well, I love to travel. So like I mentioned, I've, I've actually been to over 40 countries now. Um, I also have this weekend, I'm going to be up in Seattle. I'm, I live in LA, but I'll be in Seattle for a Spartan race, which is like a mud run or like an extreme race. Um, and I do those competitively. I had a little bit of, a little bit of knee issues. So I'm trying to resolve that. But, uh, and then top five people I hang out with, that's, that's a good question. I mean, I just try to think about, you know, when, it, it depends in different areas of life. I have different people for different things. I mean, whenever I can do a panel and I can get Ken McElroy on there, or I can get, um, Kind of George Gammon, who's kind of a macroeconomics guy, really bright guy. Uh, Rick Rules in the metal space. I mean, there's so many. You know, I think one thing, one strength I have is just I'm very curious about a lot of different things. And so when you can be curious and you're in the room with successful people, uh, I know Anton was actually in Belize this year, and there was a lot of people that were around. It's just like you're just around people that are you know one or two steps ahead. It's like you just learn so much. So anybody who's learning and growing, and you know, all different fields really. Awesome, man. Well, hey, again, Bronson, thank you very much. Great content, great info. Why don't you drop your contact info in the in the chat, if you would, just one more time. And, uh, you know, uh, we're going to go do a little networking. We're going to do one breakout, folks. So it will be 15 minutes long. So bear with me. I'm going to fumble my way through the breakout uh, process, and then we'll come back and we'll wrap up. But again, Bronson, thank you very much, sir. Uh, look forward to seeing you here soon. Awesome. Thanks. And feel free to reach out to me if anybody has any questions. Let's, uh, let's chat. So thanks. Well, thanks everybody for joining in. Um, you know, again, thank you to Bronson for hanging out with us, even through the networking and the breakout sessions. Great content tonight. If you guys have additional questions, um, I'm sure Bronson's happy to have some follow-up sessions, but uh, please join us every month. We do this the second Wednesday, I think, of every month here at MFM Masters with our friends there in DFW. Uh, we do webinars, have a lot of great content, a lot of great uh, hosts, and a lot of great panelists and speakers. So check it out. But uh, for the time being, have a great evening. Everybody be safe, and uh, we will see you guys next week. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Be well, everyone. Thanks, All everyone. Right. This was great. Thanks, Ben. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody.